This is the Infinix Note 50 Pro Plus disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a red rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. So you don't have to take apart the back plate to replace those. But if you're planning on replacing the entire camera bezel, there are 5 Phillips screws which need to be removed in order to pry off and replace that. Now there are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. The flex cable for the health sensor is still attached to the main board, which needs to be disconnected. So taking a look at the top motherboard cover, we see the bioactive halo light and health sensor, the dual LED flash, some antenna lines drawn on the plastic cover which are the light gray color lines, the NFC antenna, the wireless charging coil, and graphite film top transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cables can now be disconnected. There's a pull pouch for the battery to help you pry it off. This is the 5200 milliamp hour battery. So looking at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera, the 8 megapixel ultra wide, and the 50 megapixel periscope telephoto lens. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off, and the one for the periscope lens has a metal cover over it which needs to be removed, and then the cable can be disconnected. The main and periscope lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker and a secondary microphone on the top. Looking at the other side, we see the 32 megapixel front facing camera, the infrared or IR blaster, and the proximity and ambient light sensor. There's also copper film on the back shields as well as thermal paste to help transfer heat. Once the copper film has been peeled back, we see additional thermal paste underneath on top of the RAM and processor and the ROM or onboard storage. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. This is the bottom speaker assembly. This is the speaker itself, 
and this is an antenna board the coaxial cable is connected to. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, and the screen cable is connected to the subboard as well. On the subboard, we see the primary microphone, a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, and the rubber gaskets around the connectors and charger port. The SIM reader is located on the other side, and we have a better look at the USB-C charger port. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and the speaker assembly itself, giving you access to the subboard, at which point you disconnect the flex cables from the subboard and remove the subboard. You then have to remove this black rubber gasket, at which point you can heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. The x-axis vibrator motor is located here which is held on with some adhesive, and next to that is the fingerprint scanner. If you needed to place either of those, just apply some heat and gently pry them off. This is the flex cable for the power button, and on this side is the one for the volume keys. To replace those, just gently peel off the flex cables, and pull out the black plastic brackets from the slits in the frame, at which point you'd be able to lift up and pull out the flex cables. Once this flex cable has been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The earpiece speaker is located on top, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. For this phone, if you were to accidentally insert the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes so that they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.